Hi guys, welcome to a new series. Uh, so this is not garage related. If you're not into the non-garage related videos, feel free to skip this one. Um, I did ask previously if, and I, and I got some responses that people would like to see uh, when I'm building my office. So that's what this series is going to be on. I'm generally going to release them on Thursdays, or I'm gonna to try to. Um, and I'm going to, I'll put office in the title. So you'll be able to skip over them or go right to them if there's something that you wanna watch. So this room that we're in is a, it's a white box. Uh, so it is 12 by 13. Um, as you can see, it has a single window. On that side, it has a single closet, um, which is over here. And there is an entry door there. So this is 12 feet wide, 13 feet deep. That closet is eight feet wide at the widest point and five and a half feet deep at the deepest point. Uh, so nice size closet. Um, this is a four bedroom house. We had three kids that were staying here um, and one of them has moved out. So now we only have two kids here. So they each have their own room. Um, our nine year old was in this room and we moved her into her brother's old room uh, because that one has a bathroom. So in this series, um, we're going to be taking this white box and turning it into something great. We're going to be painting. We're going to be, um, we're gonna get carpet installed. We're doing a ceiling fan. We're doing DMF lights. We're doing a uh, TV on that wall. Um, we're going to do a two channel stereo setup and an uplift desk with a chair. So this will be my office during the day. I work in IT, that's my normal job. I do all this detailing stuff on the side because it's my passion, but my job is IT and I generally work from home. Um, historically, I've worked in the living room because it was the available space. I have my desk in the corner of the living room and that's not great. Kids are going to school in the morning, interrupts me. Um, kids come home from school in the afternoon, interrupts me. Jessica gets home from work, sometimes that interrupts me. It just depends on what my day is. So this will allow me to have a space that's for me. So we're going to start off um, to get this room ready for paint. So today is Saturday, it's around two o'clock. And on Monday, the carpet guys are coming to install carpet. So I wanna get the walls painted and well spackled painted and done before the carpet goes in. So I don't have to worry about tarping or protecting the carpet or getting paint on my new carpet. So today I'm gonna to try to get my first coat of paint on, spackle on dry, um, my paint on, at least my first coat, and then um, start. So tomorrow I can do my second coat of paint, I can do my DMF lights and I can install my fan. And maybe if I have some time, I'll do the TV or some other stuff, the blinds, etc. cetera, as the, after the paint is dried. So this is just a white box, it is high gloss. Um, I've got a bunch of supplies here. I'm going to be painting it with Benjamin Moore paints. This is the Ben line. Ben, this is matte finish. Um, the color I'm using is AF695. It's called Eternity. It's a light gray. Um, and then for the ceiling, I'm going to be using a color called Frostine. It's AF5, Frostine. Um, those are from the Benjamin Moore Affinity color palette. They have a couple different color palettes. It's the one that's called Affinity. That's why they start with an AF. Um, the trim is just gonna be white. Um, so I'll use gloss paint for that. Um, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be prepping for paint. So I'm going to be removing the receptacle covers. I'm going to be removing like this TV mount from the wall here. Um, I'm going to be removing like this is a screw that used to have a picture on it. Remove that and the, there's like a plastic retainer there. Um, so just get everything, the receptacle covers, the blinds, et cetera, down and um, get to the point where I can start doing spackle and filling in holes. All right, so starting off simple, um, when you've got switch covers like this, we're just gonna remove those. You can technically paint around them, I guess, but the right way is to remove them. In this case, I'm actually going to be replacing the switches and the covers. Um, because a lot of these covers have paint on the edges of them and stuff. And I'm going to be swapping the switches out for Lutron um, and the receptacles as well. So we're just going to go around and do that to all of them. There's like 12 of them here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this TV mount. Um, like I said, I'm putting a TV on a different wall. It's going to be a larger TV as well. Lock 
be high speed. Uh, last, we're going to remove these blinds. So these are kind that you lift up and there's like a Phillips screw on the bottom of each of the hangers. Which really only matters if you want to rehang them. I'm putting different blinds up, but I'm going to save these anyway. And then we're going to remove the blind mounts. In this case, they're quarter inch hex. Last, we're going to remove this light from the ceiling and shut off the switch so there's no power. Dome comes off. Can pull the light bulb. light fixture, you just loosen up the screws. And then we can remove the lamp. And it's obvious that the last people painted around the light instead of painting the light, which in my opinion is a janky way to do it. Again, they painted around it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean up any like heavy dirt. So there's some around this window, for example. I'm just using a glass cleaner, surface cleaner, lots of things will work. I just want something that doesn't leave residue behind. Baseboard trim is kind of the same way. going to go all the way around the room with this. And you want to look for any like heavy dirt, palm prints, things like that. Especially in kids rooms. You don't have to make the walls perfect, but you just want to avoid leaving things that are going to cause the paint to not stick. All right. So now that we're done with that, the next thing that we want to do Take like a 
six inch spackle knife. And I'm just looking for like chips, stuff, things that are hanging. It's like a dent here. There's a couple spots here. So you can see like here, this is where the TV mount was. You want to avoid things that are going to make the paint stick out. I'm using, uh, I got a bucket of dap here. It's the pink stuff that changes colors. Um, so we're going to be using that. And it goes on pink, dries white, and allows me to know when I'm ready to paint. So I'm just going to go around and kind of hit all of these spots. I'll start off with this TV. It's a good one to do for the camera. So you just kind of want to push a blob in like that. And then just go over it a couple times, different angles. This is like a six inch blade. I actually like this size. Sometimes you have to use a bigger one depending on how bad the hole is. Um, so I got that. Not that and we're just going to go around and hit the rest of them and some of these bigger ones will have to hit twice so generally i'm just going to start on one wall i'm going to work my way all the way around the room and i'm going to do the ceiling as well and the ceiling i actually only have one so that should be pretty easy to do i'll be back like i mentioned at the beginning um, this is being recarpeted on monday so I'm pulling up the old carpet just to make it easier. Um, when you're doing this, there's a tack strip on the side here that has nails that kind of point towards the wall. Come on, out of the way. I know. So if you just roll it up like this, it'll kind of pull the nails out of the tack strip and you'll end up with the carpet and the padding together. So I just kind of cut this up into a couple strips make them manageable, get them out of here. So I'm just trying to keep moving here. While I'm waiting for my spackle to dry, I'm working on my DMF lights. So what I'm gonna do is just hang the cans in the ceiling. I already did three of them, this is the last one, so I kind of cheated a little bit, but the um, having them already in the ceiling is going to mean that I don't have to put my hands on the ceiling to drill them later after it's been painted. So I have here a tape measure and the actual can. Um, this is a M4RMRF from DMF Lights. Um, it is a four inch retrofit can. And I picked it up from Obsess Garage. Um, I don't know the pricing offhand. I'll, I'll get into all of that later. But uh, what I'm doing is I'm measuring off of this wall. Um, four feet. So I'm looking for symmetry here. Um, so I measure off of this wall four feet and I'm measuring off of this wall. The room is a rectangle. It's 12 by 13. Um, I wanted to do three feet off of each wall, but my fire alarm was going to be in the way of one of them. So I just opted to go Three and a half and four. All right. So we made our mark. This is the, uh, it's a Milwaukee recessed can saw. Um, I talked about this in my Cree video, so I'm not gonna get into it really too heavily, but this thing is awesome. Uh, if you're doing this, totally buy one. Um, I have it set at four and a half inches. For the DMF, I can tell you from my first one that if you do four and a quarter, it doesn't work, which is what the Cree is. All right, there's like no mess. So put this up here like that. It up in the hole. And there's like these two clamps that you just push back and it's in. So now I'm going to have to go up above and run the Romex into the top of it. 
Um, each of these cans accepts uh, four Romex up to 12 gauge. It also accepts a one inch or three quarter inch knockouts. Um, so I'm gonna be doing the Romex through the top. All right, so at this point, I'm nearing the end of my first day. Um, I painted the ceiling. I did two coats, uh, came out fantastic. I just did two coats because I did two coats. Um, once the roller and all the stuff is out, the second coat took 20 minutes, it's not a huge deal. Um, but it's like 7.30 and I'm not gonna get the walls done today. The closet, just there's a lot of stuff that needs to be painted in there when I do the walls. So rather than get all of the stuff out to then clean it all up, to then get it out again tomorrow, what I'm instead going to do is I'm going to get the wall paint and I'm going to, um, between the trim and the wall, I'm gonna get the bottom of the wall all the way around the room. So what this is going to do is tomorrow when I roll the wall, I can roll up to the point that I cut in and then I can immediately do the trim when I'm done with the walls because I won't have to wait for the walls to dry because that edge will already be dry. And realistically, my goal is by the end of the day tomorrow, I have to get the trim done. The walls are nice. The trim is like, yes, has to be done in order for the um, carpet to come in on Monday and be installed. And realistically, I probably should just push the carpet back a day, but whatever. Um, I do still have a couple spots on the walls where the spackle isn't 100% dry, so I'm waiting on that, and that's what cost me time. That's why I did the ceiling first, because the walls weren't dry, and like I said, now I'm nearing the end of my day. So I'm gonna do that, and then, I don't know, if I still have energy left, maybe I'll hang a fan, not sure. Now with this, I'm not 100% concerned with accuracy. I'm really concerned with coverage. So I want to seal between the wall and the trim. I want to provide coverage, but I don't want to put so much on that I have paint running down my trim and drips. So. I found that just assuming that you're going to do two coats at the beginning kind of keeps you from ending up chasing drips the entire time. And all I'm doing is painting up high enough so that I'm guaranteed that my roller be able to go all the way to the paint. So if I just run around the room twice like this, probably take me somewhere between 30 and 45 minutes. Then tomorrow, when I roll out the wall, I will come down to about here but the trim will be, this gray on the top of the trim will be dry, so I can immediately paint the trim. And I'm just painting out of the can. I don't need a special bucket or anything like that. Just keep it simple. Brush is easy to clean. get the rollers out tomorrow for the walls. So you can get an idea here of the color that I chose. It's a light gray. It's, uh, it's got a little bit of um, kind of a beige tint to it. It's more of a, 
we'll say a brown gray than a blue gray, if you know what I mean. But it's still not beige. It's definitely gray. Um, and this is going to go well with the carpet that I chose, the acoustic treatments, and everything else. <laughs> 